and welcome back yeah now this week i was actually going to talk about my smart heater controller the pcb of which you can see down here but things have taken a turn well i suppose you could say for the worse and uh, so i've sort of moved on from there and i want to share with you something that i think is really really important when we construct our projects what do i possibly mean well keep watching and learn indeed now when i constructed my smart heater controller i'll show you that um, it's all done by the way uh, i'll show you that just in a sec um, i had to change it because uh, as you know i had some uh, issues with getting the uh, infrared fan control working uh, but that was all resolved as well great thanks to you guys you sort of put me on the right track there but to put the actual circuitry into that little wall box was well a little bit of a challenge and uh, whilst i get it got it to fit because it's not part of this um, original PCB here because I hadn't thought of that uh, functionality at the time whilst I got it all in there and working it meant I had to keep taking the front panel off yeah with all the wires and everything and that's where disaster struck okay before we start looking at all this then and I'll tell you what that's about let's have a look at the actual smart heater controller as it was I don't know a little little while ago now uh, because I prepared some video and never actually used it but we'll have a look at it and I'll, I'll point out the bits that are really oh I wish I'd done this differently sort of thing I want to give a big shout out to PCB way PCB prototype the easy way now we're all familiar with their special PCBs five dollars for ten pieces but uh, you can also have flex PCBs advanced PCBs and of course you can order custom parts let's have a look at the CNC and 3d printing options they have so it's 3D printing first. You upload your CAD files as you would do normally for a PCB, but then you select your materials and submit a quote request. CNC machining is pretty similar in the way you submit your files, upload your CAD files, select one of these many, many different types of material you can use. And of course, there are also 27 different options for the surface finishing. Just look at a few of those there, from anodized, brushed, bead blast, spray painting, and there's more under that list as well. And finally, there's sheet metal, laser cutting and bending. So let's have a look at that. Once again, you upload your CAD files, select the product you want to make it from, and uh, specify a few of the parameters here about whether you want threads, for example. And you can always submit your request for a quote, and it's about uh, seven to nine business days to get it done okay that's pcb way excellent service good quality why don't you check them out now so this is my smart uh, heater controller and as you can see there's lots of cables running out to the front panel so uh, every time i take the front panel off strain is being put onto these cables and there's quite a few actually as you can see hmm not a great idea right just to set the context then as you can see from this arduino uno clone board how do we connect this up normally Yes, I mean, the answer's staring us in the face, isn't it? We use these DuPont cables. Short ones, long ones, whatever. Yeah, sockets, pins, whichever way you want to go. And uh, I think we get lulled into a false sense of security that these things are good enough for not just experimental purposes, but for the final project. At least, stupidly, that's the where I ended up when I was doing this. So that where at the moment you can see three white sockets on there, on the one in the wall, as you just saw, they were just pin headers, exactly like the ones you see on the Arduino. And I think that'll be all right because, you know, I'm not opening the front panel every 10 seconds. It's just going to be done once, connect the cables, close the front panel, the end. I wish. Things never work out like that, do they? And as I say, when I put the extra circuitry in for the infrared control of my fan, Plus, then I managed to destroy one of the LEDs on the front panel, so I'd replace that. Basically, the DuPont cables were absolute rubbish for a production project. And I seriously considered taking the whole thing apart again and rebuilding it on a new board like this, because after all, you get five, don't you, from the uh, PCB manufacturer, yeah? This is a JLC PCB board, as you can see. And I thought, I'm going to rebuild it, and this time use some proper sockets. Except, those sockets, by the way, are JST 
sockets and they come in various pin spacings these are 2.54 exactly the same as the ones on say an arduino and they're breadboard friendly and everything else but you can get them two millimeters or even even 1.27 i believe but anyway i thought no let's keep it 2.54 uh, 0.1 inch basically and um, see how that goes but that's not the complete answer whilst the uh, dupont cables on say a dev board like this or indeed on my my smart heater controller um, fit on rather nicely what they also do at a drop of a hat is pull straight off again so as i'm closing the front panel or lifting it up or whatever these things just pop off because the spring tension in these these pin headers is just pretty poor yeah they're designed for development use aren't they for experimental use not for a production unit now i do have some very high quality dupont cables as well short ones i've acquired them from uh, rs components i bought a set from there and i also got given a set from amazon just to evaluate and they are admittedly a lot better but still nothing like a proper plug and socket arrangement, which is what I'm doing here. But that's not the whole story. If you were to replace your pin headers with sockets like these, um, JST sockets, remember, right? 2.54 pin spacing. There's two things to remember. One, as you can see now from this socket here, um, they are wider than pin headers, so it's gone over the... Um, the silk screening on that side and almost obliterated it on that side so you'd have to take that into account and use a proper footprint however that aside why else aren't these sockets everything that they could be uh, my only experience of these type of sockets and the smaller ones and this actually are on drones something that has a lot of vibration and you never ever ever want the plug to come out of a socket when you're flying a drone yeah because well that'd be it wouldn't it so these sockets and related plugs are designed to fit together and then not come out. Let me explain. So here I fitted a, um, a, a five-way yeah, five plug into a socket. Yeah? And uh, they are polarised in the sense you can only really connect them one way around. If you try to do it the other way, it becomes pretty obvious pretty quickly that something's not right. Yeah? So they've got two slots one side, as you can see on here, say two slots and then a just a blank on the other side so it's nice and easy to get them polarized so you don't have to worry too much about the colors of the wires anymore but there's a big problem if you ever want to take them apart although it's only plastic that this is made of it's the devil's own game to actually pull them apart again and everybody on the internet because i looked it up it says how on earth do you get these apart without destroying either the the socket on the pcb or pulling on the wires which you probably don't want to do how do you get these apart and the answer is well you struggle oh and then it comes off really quickly and probably bends something inside and that isn't really the answer let me put this under the um, microscope that i've got set up right next to me and i'll explain what the problem is so here we have the socket that we just saw on the board yeah and it fits in rather nice and the slots on the front there let me just adjust the focus a little bit now you can just make out that at the top of the slot there are these little bits of plastic poking out there's one there and there's one over the other side there as well now if i put the plug in you'll see why they're so good at not falling apart so here the plug is fitted and as you can see the bit of plastic on the plug here is shaped sort of like a, a trapezoid almost and it locks into this plug both here and over the other side here and it prevents this socket and plug sort of from disengaging if i pull on here i mean it would require several kilos i think of pulling power to pull that off now that's okay of course if you have got a drone and you don't want the thing falling apart in mid-air or any other piece of machinery with lots of vibration that's great it's specifically designed to stop the thing falling apart but in our arduino projects we sometimes do want things to come back apart again and we don't want to spend an inordinate amount of pressure trying to separate these two either with screwdrivers or fingernails or whatever it's just not on is it now there is a way around this let me show you so here we have a three pin socket 
on the, on that same board and it's not been modified at all you can still see at the top there the little bits of plastic that are wider than the rest one there and one down there right so that's not changed at all but let me plug in the plug and you'll see what i've done there we are in it is but if you notice the little bits of plastic on the plug here have now been taken off with this very knife that i'm holding this is a i think they call it a hobby knife or something like that yeah so they haven't got the little bits of plastic sticking out they're going to catch on these bits of plastic at the top it's all just a, a straight bit of plastic yeah and it didn't take hardly any any effort to take those tiny little nibs off those uh, plugs sleeves if you like so now when you want to take this this apart you literally just pull it out and the only thing stopping it coming apart now is the friction of the pins on those on the sockets in, inside the header there but that's plenty to stop them coming out under normal use uh, not in drone use but certainly for project use it's more than sufficient certainly exactly what i need so i'm thinking now what i need to do um, in future is to use these sockets potentially a change in the way i've just explained it um, to ensure that my project doesn't fall apart as i'm trying to fix things now it might be of course that you only need to take the nib off one of those pins going down and just have it hooked up on one side that might be enough uh, for you to easily take the thing apart um, i guess a little bit of experimentations in order here but certainly for me taking the nibs off both sides is the way forward for me so for me i think i've um, pretty much nailed that issue about using dupont cables in a production environment and to be quite honest i don't know why i did it for this particular project other than me thinking it will be all right you know i'm only going to keep the thing connected and then leave it alone dupont cables will handle that and indeed if i had not touched them it probably would have handled it quite happily but taking the front panel of them off you know 10 20 times it just wasn't ever cut out to do that so there are other ways of doing it and of course i should know better because i've done it in my esp32 web radio i actually use this sort of cable ribbon cable yeah and make my own ribbon cables up with these connectors these connectors are called idc connectors and you can get them in lots of ways i think this is a double one let me just take it off yeah as you can see there it's a double pin yeah so it's two rows of five i think there now you might think hang on a minute i don't know anything about idc cables how how on earth do you make one of these now you probably use them already on your arduino indeed if you use an arduino as an isp programmer for something like an 80 tiny 85 you will undoubtedly have used one of these or to program one arduino from another because a similar plug to this fits into that socket on the arduino that one there iscp that's not right is it should be icsp in circuit serial programmer right and that connects to the other one on another Arduino and you can use this one running a special sketch to program another one yet yeah, without using the USB socket that is so you've probably already used these type of cables and if you haven't uh, here's your chance but they come in two parts the the main plug itself and then this bit at the top but you don't actually have to make a connection you just push it in clamp it up in a vice put this top bit on to stop the thing pulling apart and then you've got an ultra strong cable So to make one of these cables, uh, let's use 10-way strip. Basically, it's just flat cable like this or with a red stripe, and that's the important bit. Make sure that the red stripe is where you expect it to be on the IDC 10-way connector. So basically, this goes inside there. You can see, if I do a real close-up, you can see there's sort of little sharp teeth in there that puncture the cable when it's gone through. So the idea is you slide the the cable inside like that so it's sort of more or less flush it doesn't matter if it sticks out a little tiny bit and then you just wind this up together in a vice i suppose you could use pliers but mm, i don't think it was going to give a as good a result now before we clamp anything up there remember that this second part the sort of saddle bit 
is supposed to go on the top like that, so it fits on top, and the cable goes like that. So if you'd made it like this now, your pin number one would be up here. Always make sure that that's what you intend. Okay, so when you set up the plug initially like that, with the red stripe down the bottom, because you're going to turn it round and effectively over in order to put the saddle bit on, the pin changes orientation, doesn't it, to the top. Okay, now I'd never get that wrong, of course. <laughs> yes, okay, I've got it wrong once or twice. But if that happens, don't try and salvage the plug. You really can't, well, at least I couldn't. Just cut it off. I mean, this cable's cheap, isn't it? Cut it off, chuck the plug, and uh, use another one. You can buy them literally by the the dozen from places like AliExpress. Obviously, if you want a really quality product, you need to buy it somewhere like Mauser, DigiKey, RS Components, CPC, somewhere like that. Okay, let's make this cable then. This is how it looks, at, looks when it's finished. So we've got it pretty much in. We've sort of pushed this down a little bit just to make sure it's uh, in yeah, and square. Now we need to clamp this up in a vise, which I have set up over here. Okay, we're going to use this little Stanley vise. Now, if you've got these rubber um, jaw protectors on it, I suggest they come off because you want absolute control over this. So all we need to do is slide this in the correct orientation. Okay, let it stick out a little bit, as we said before. And then just basically put this in here and do it up slowly and surely. Let's not overdo it, though. We'll just line that up. And all I'm going to do is squeeze that up. Now you might find that for your particular vice it works better going this way. Um, I'd probably do this more in the centre of the jaws if I weren't doing this on the video. But uh, if I just slowly squeeze that up, and the trick here is to do it just slowly and just enough. I, mean, I think that's probably it. Yes, it's it's closed that side. And it's closed that side. Obviously, you're going to have to test this cable when you've done it. Pin for pin from the other end when you get the other cable header on. Um, but apart from that, that's okay. Now we need to put the um, the sort of saddle gripper cable thing on. I notice some cables don't put that on, but it's it's poor quality because any pressure on here. If I'm pulling this, all the pressure is on the pins underneath. Whereas if we fold that back over and put the, the the strain relief on there, when we pull it now, the pressure's here, which is much stronger than those pins underneath. So, we get the little saddle clip, just like that, and basically it just, it just slots in one of those little holes, both sides, and then you just push down. There we are. It sort of snaps in, keeps itself locked, and that's it, done. It's, um, obviously a very strong and robust connection and interestingly enough there's no no clips on the IDC socket it's, it's polarized so you can only put it in one way but there's nothing holding it in other than the friction of the pins itself and the plastic I suppose around it this might be a step too far though for, for some people um, certainly was for me for years I didn't didn't touch these but JST pre-wired connections are definitely a possibility. Now, there's yet another variant of JST. As you can see, at the moment, I've got a, a socket, a PCB socket, soldered to the board, right? It's just a standard socket, pretty much like um, a pin header would be on an Arduino. But you can get plugs and sockets like this that are pre-wired, both header and um, socket, so with flying leads on both halves. So you don't actually have to solder a pin header or anywhere, you can just solder the cables directly to the board as long as you have strain relief. That is, you don't allow the cables, if you were going to solder these three cables, for example, into three holes on here, you can't just do it like that, solder them in holes like that. This cable has got to be secured somehow, either with a cable tie, say in that hole there, you can put a cable tie around that, so that when any pressure is exerted, it's on that cable tie, not the soldered connection holes. That will come off as soon as look at it, I can assure you. So, my woes for that smart heater controller 
will have to just remain at the minute. Um, I've sort of got a halfway house. I'm using two of these JST connectors and the remaining DuPont cables are staying because I'm hoping I don't have to open it up anymore. But I'm not going to take the whole thing out and put in a brand new board because it means I'd have to desolder some of the components like the, the transformer because I'm not, I haven't got a spare and I don't want to buy another one. Okay, I'm sort of oh, thinking why didn't I do it properly to begin with? I knew I should have done, but I thought I could get away with it. And that's all it was, getting away with it, not doing the job properly. So I'm going to, I'm going to punish myself by not drinking coffee for a week now. Yeah, I know. How am I going to do that? Oh. But I will, in future, put on proper connectors on all my projects. And I heartily recommend you do the same. Your comments on how you connect things up and whether you think DuPont cables are fine or not, or whether you use something else, will be really good to hear from you down below. Yeah, And I'll put links to all these ones I've found. Some of these I bought off Amazon at about five times the price you could buy them in China from AliExpress or somewhere. Although these days, I've got to, I've got to be honest, um, certainly from the EU and the UK, if you order anything now from a Chinese warehouse, they will automatically add the tax on, the sales tax, VAT as we know it, on top of all that. So it does bump up the price by 20%, the very discount, if you like, that made Chinese goods so so worthwhile buying. But hmm. Anyway, so that's why I bought some from Amazon, just quickly so I could get my project up and running again without having to wait for you know, a month before the things arrived. But I've got a whole kit coming soon. Um, so I'll have plenty of sockets for future projects. Talking of which, I'm waiting for a PCB uh, from JLC PCB. The PCB that was rejected, not once, not twice, four times it was rejected by JLC PCB. What went wrong with that? You'll have to wait for a future video. Thanks for watching. See you soon. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.